Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us for our Exploring Our Online Archive Resources webinar today. My name is Lucy, and I am the iMechies Archivist. I'm joined this afternoon by my colleagues Sarah, Ellen and Adrian from the Institutions Library. They are on hand to answer any questions you might have during the webinar itself. Please type your questions into the Q&A section making sure you send your question to all panellists so that Sarah, Ellen and Adrian are able to view and respond. Questions sent only to me as the host can't be answered during the webinar. The webinar should last for 25 to 30 minutes, after which we will be available for 10 minutes or so to answer any questions. We'll be sending a recording of the webinar to everybody who consented to receive it when you registered to attend. And the recording will also be uploaded to the iMechie YouTube channel. You are also welcome to get in touch with us by phone or email with any additional inquiries after the webinar is concluded. So for now, we'll get started. So this afternoon, I'm going to run through a brief introduction to what an archive is and more specifically, the sorts of material that might be found in the institution's archives. I'll introduce you to our virtual archive, demonstrate searching for an individual, run through how to search our online archive catalogue, show you where to find out more information about some of our collections, and finally let you know how to get in touch with us with any inquiries or requests for access. So what is an archive? Archives contain materials that have been created by individuals, groups or organisations during their lifetime, which have been deemed to be worth keeping permanently for the purposes of research or as evidence of the functions and responsibilities of their creator. Archives often provide perspectives on economic political and social history, as well as recording the business and activities of that individual, group or organisation. Archive materials may be documents, volumes, photographs, drawings, digital files and so on. And generally speaking, archives consist of unpublished material. This means there are differences in how archive items are stored and made available. We might invite you to make an appointment to view archive material in person, or we might provide you with a digital surrogate. However, unlike library material, you cannot borrow archive material. If you're interested in published material, such as books, journals, and the IMEC's proceedings, these fall under the scope of the library collection. My library colleagues run regular library webinars, which you may wish to keep an eye out for, or you can watch a recording of a previous library webinar on the iMechi YouTube channel. So what is in the iMechi archive? Our collections are primarily paper-based. However, we are fortunate enough to have digitized a selection of our collection which is available to be viewed online. Our collections date from 1726, and they include the personal papers of mechanical engineers, including letters, notebooks, and blueprints, business records of engineering firms, records of the Institution of Mechanical Engineers, including council minutes and membership records, and also records that relate to the merged bodies, including the Institution of Locomotive Engineers and the Institution of Automobile Engineers. And finally, the collections also include artefacts, such as models, artworks and personal items. Our virtual archive is an online portal for some of our digital collections. It features a selection of key objects drawings, notebooks, documents and photographs 
which provide a perspective on the history of the institution and the history of mechanical engineering. The virtual archive can be accessed either by going to the URL shown on the slide here, archives.imeki.org, or via the iMeki homepage. So now with fingers crossed and thanks to the wonders of technology, I'm going to do a live demo of the virtual archive. So I'm just going to switch to that now. So from the iMeki homepage, which is iMeki.org, choose Library and Archive from the top menu. And this will take you to the Library and Archive homepage. If you scroll down, all of the material that relates to the archive is in this middle column, which is titled Explore Our Archive and Artifacts. To get to the virtual archive from this column, select the digitized archive link beneath Browse Our Catalogues. This will take you to the virtual archive homepage, and from here you're able to both browse the collection and to run a more specific search. So we see that we have created themed galleries that you may browse. We have this year a new gallery, the 175th anniversary of the iMeki gallery. We've also got a collection of artifacts, some subject themed galleries, automotive, engines, industrial, institution history and railways, and finally, a collection of unidentified images from our collections. So I'll just have a quick look in our virtual 175th archive gallery. And in here we have a timeline which covers Imeki's history from the first conversation about founding the institution in 1846 all the way up to the present day. And there's also a number of collections that you can search as well. I'm going to have a look also at the artifacts collection and this includes 2D and 360 degree images of some of the objects that we hold in our collections. So if we have a look at the steam hammer for example, you find on the right hand side of the page there's a little bit more information about the model. And on the left hand side of the page, there is a play button, which allows you to start auto rotating the image of the model. You can press stop and you can also press the right and the left hand buttons to turn through each individual shot of the steam hammer. And you can also use the magnifying glass up here in the middle sort of top part of the page to have a closer look and you've got the option at the bottom here with the plus and the minus magnifying glass to zoom in to have a closer look. Just head back to the home page and we'll have a closer look in one of the subject themed galleries and I'm going to have a look in the railways gallery and you will hear, see here we've got some collections at the top of the page and if you continue scrolling down, we've got a number of items as well. And hopefully you can see that the material is a mixture of photographs and drawings. So if we choose to have a look at an example image, I'm going to choose something from the Great Indian Peninsula Railway. And I'm then going to choose Horsebox 665. Again, you will see that on the right hand side of the page, there's some more information about the image and the thing to note here is this archive reference which is a unique identifier for this photograph so if you did wish to get in touch with us about material on our virtual archive that is the reference to quote to us and if you click on the image itself you'll be able to see a larger version and you can use the scroll pad on your mouse to then zoom in and the, your mouse to have a look around the image as well. And there's an X in the top right hand corner to close the image and go back to the image page. 
The other thing that you can do on the virtual archive is search for an individual. So a keyword search of our virtual archive also searches most of the text of our historic council minutes which are available on the virtual archive. So this can be particularly useful if you're interested in searching for an individual. Historically, membership lists were published in our council minutes. So if you are searching for an individual, it is worth entering both their first and second names. I'm going to search for Beatrice Naylor, who is better known as Beatrice Schilling, who is an aeronautical engineer. And this is uh, the one result which we found for Beatrice Naylor. And the title of the file tells me it's from the 1956 Council Minutes. And the description uses the optical character recognition, which has been used to create a transcription of the minutes. So if we click on the title, we'll be able to see a little bit more information about the 1956 minutes. And we'll also be able to see the page that the result has been found on. And if we click the full screen button, which is these four arrows heading away from one another, we'll be able to see the result on the full screen. We can see that this is the council minutes from April 1956. And highlighted on the page here has been where the result has been found. And we can see Mrs. Beatrice Naylor has been made an associate member. If you press escape, then you'll go back to the non full screen option. So if you are interested in searching for an individual member, we also have a collection of material on the family history site Ancestry, which relates to individuals who joined the institution between 1847 and 1938. So I'll show you how to navigate there. I'll head back to the iMeki homepage, iMeki.org, and click on the Library and Archive menu to get to the Library and Archive homepage. We'll scroll down to that middle column, which is titled Explore Our Archive and Artifacts. And if we click on that, we're taken to a submenu where we can click on Find Out About the Archive. And I will mention that this is actually a really useful page um, because it has got links to all of our uh, sort of various places where archive material is online. So you can go to our catalogue, the virtual archive. We also have an image library. And here we have uh, links to our collection on Ancestry. iMeki members can search our collection on Ancestry for free using their single sign-on username and password for the iMeki website. Non-members can perform a search but would require an Ancestry subscription to view the full search results. Many public libraries in the UK offer Ancestry usage for their members, so this is worth checking out if you're a non-member. So I'm going to click on the Members Ancestry link. And because I've already logged into the iMeki website this morning, it's taken me straight through to our collection homepage on Ancestry. The text on the right hand side of the page here tells you a little bit more about iMeki and the collections which are available on Ancestry. And on the left hand side you've got a search box where we can enter some information about the individual that we're interested in. I'm going to search for an individual named Frederick Henry Royce and I'm going to click the green search button. And I'll be taken to a search results page, which has got the results which Ancestry thinks are relevant to me. And if I scroll down a little, I have found a few results down. There is an individual named Frederick Henry Royce. If I click on the view button, that will take me to the search result. And this is an image from our membership proposal forms. The right hand side of the page shows the front cover of a membership proposal form completed by Frederick Henry Royce. If I scroll in a bit, we can see that his occupation is electrical and mechanical engineer. 
and if I click on this right hand arrow I will be taken to the next page of his membership record and here we can see that he is the managing director in FH Royce and Son no oh, and Co Limited from June the 4th 1894 to the present date and this Frederick Henry Royce went on to part found Rolls-Royce. Up in the top right hand corner of Ancestry there is a white button which is titled save. If you click on that button it uh, gives you the option to either send image home which allows you to email a copy of the image to yourself or save to this computer and you can save a copy of the image to your computer for your own personal use. If you're interested in searching for an individual, we will be uh, hosting a webinar in September, which is all about using uh, Ancestry to search for our historic members. So next up, we're going to take a look at our online archive catalogue. So I'm going to head back to the iMeki homepage. We're going to click on that library and archive link. And we're going to head down to that middle, explore our archive and artifacts column. And beneath browse our catalogues at the bottom of that column, we're going to click on archive catalogue. So firstly, it's worth my mentioning the difference between our virtual archive, which we've just had a look at, and our archive catalogue, which we're about to have a look at. So the virtual archive is an imaged focus way for us to showcase our digitized archive material. Our archive catalogue is the place that contains description of all of our catalogued archive material, regardless of whether it's been digitized or not. So you may use the archive catalogue to identify material which may be of interest to you. So the best way to search our catalogue for a specific query is by using the text box on the home page where you can enter a keyword or keywords into the box and hit the uh, red and white magnifying glass button. So I'm going to use an example of JetPipe. So we enter JetPipe into the search box and hit the magnifying button. And this is what our search result page looks like. It provides a summary of the search results for you to browse. And from there, you can select items to have a closer look. So there's a few things to note when you're looking at this search results page before you get stuck into the results themselves. So by default, results are ordered by relevance. So the catalogue shows you which most meet the keywords that you've entered. There's four tabs at the top of the search results, archive records, names, places and subjects. And from here, you're going to be most interested in those under the tab archive records and we can see from the number in brackets here that there have been eight found. Over on the left hand side of the page you can see that there is uh, boxes for the date range and this suggests that the results are all dated between 1936 and 1960 so you can see at a glance if the material you're interested in fits within those dates. And also on the left hand side box, there's the opportunity to narrow down your search should you wish by showing you which categories your search results have fallen into. So if we look at these search results themselves, each result appears within a rectangular box. On the right hand side of the rectangular box is the reference number. And that's that unique identifier for the material. And in the center here is the title of the research result. So if you like the sound of something from these initial search results, you can have a closer look at it by clicking either on the title or on the reference number. So I'm going to have a closer look at this one. So the top part of the page here shows us where this item fits within our archival hierarchy. So we, like many other archives, catalogue our archives hierarchically, which means that they work a little bit like a family tree. So in this example, our item, which is this jet pipe document, 
fits within a collection of technical design sketches, which fits under the engine collection NIAD, which sits under a parent collection, which is the archives of Dean Napier and Son. So we can see on the right hand side there is an actions box which allows you to contact us about this item, to print it, to email it or to add it to your saved records. In this case we have a digital image available for this item and if you continue scrolling down at the bottom of the record we've got some more information about it. There's a few things to note here particularly if you wish to access the material and the first of those is extent. And that tells you how much material this description is describing. So in this case, this description is describing one sheet of trace paper, which is this drawing of a jet pipe. Extent isn't always just one item. So this is why it's worth noting. Sometimes it could be, for example, 43 volumes, um, which is quite a different request for access to asking to see one item. And the other thing to note is at the bottom this access status, which in this case is set to digital, which means that we have a high resolution digital surrogate, which we would use to provide access rather than providing access to the original. And that's even if you're visiting in person. And this is for preservation reasons. There's less risk of damage to the original through retrieval. If you're interested in learning more about using our online archive catalogue, we recently delivered a webinar on that subject and it's available to watch on the iMeki YouTube channel under the library and archive playlist. And finally, I just wish to point you in the direction of some of the places where you can learn more about some of our collections. So we're going to head back to the iMeki homepage then the library and archive homepage within that. We're going to scroll down to that middle explore our archive and artifacts column and we're going to click on that. And here you can see there's links to our engineers at war exhibition and our archive blog. So our engineers at war exhibition uses our archive collections and the collections of the Institution of Civil Engineers and the Institution of Engineering and Technology to highlight contributions made by engineers during both world wars. And we also have a link to our Library and Archive blog, which is where we share posts on items from both the archive and library collections, new resources and tools, and share some of what we do behind the scenes. So this is uh, the end of our introduction to exploring our online archive resources. I realise that it's been a very uh, quick um, sort of whistle stop tour through uh, our online offerings and there's a lot of information to take in. So we're going to be available to answer any questions that you have for the next 10 or so minutes uh, from the Q&A. What I will do is I will head back to my slides and leave um, a couple of slides up with some more information for you to note down should you wish to be in touch with us. Um, we're always very happy to answer any questions that you might have. Um, so on the screen at the moment there's just some details of our next webinars. So next week on the 20th of July there is going to be a webinar on using the online library. And then after that, on the 23rd of September, we have our Searching Our Historical Membership Records webinar. And the other thing to point out, just on the image on the right hand side, is uh, all our past webinars are available on the Library and Archive playlist on the iMeki YouTube channel. And I've left our contact details on the final slide. Um, so should you wish to get in touch with us with any additional questions um, or you think of one later, then please feel free to be in touch with us. Um, thank you very much for your time this afternoon. I'm just going to check in with my colleagues to see if there have been any questions um, during the webinar.
Hi Lucy, um, no questions as yet, however we do get um, this asked all the time um, about permission to use the images on the virtual archive. Thank you, um, so images that are on the virtual archive, um, if you're using them for your own private research use, uh, then that's absolutely fine and if you wish to use them for anything else then it's best to get in touch with us um, simply because there's slightly different copyright arrangements depending on exactly which image that you're looking to use and a little bit also what you're intending to use it for. So um, the best thing is to, to get in touch and we can have a chat with you about that. Lovely, thank you. And um, got one here. Do we do I need to be a member to visit the archive? Uh, that's a good question. No, you don't. Um, so we do only um, accept archive appointments. Um, so they're, sorry, access to archives is by appointment only. So you would need to get in touch with us, ideally a few weeks before you're intending to visit, um, just to book an appointment in. Uh, but you don't need to be an IMECI member to do that. You can search the online catalogue in the virtual archive without being a member as well. Um, so you can be a member or a non-member to access the archive material. Lovely, thank you. And we've got, um, so if uh, someone's researching their family history, um, so they've said, can I ask you to do a search for a name in the iMickey records? So can they ask you to search? Yes. For them? Yeah, absolutely. Um, if you want to uh, drop us an email with the details that you have um, to our email archive at imeki.org, um, then we can have a look for you um, and see whether or not we've got any results within our membership records. Um, and we can also direct you sort of maybe to the other engineering institutions. Sometimes people um, sort of, they kind of cross the different engineering disciplines, so they may not have joined us, but they might have joined one of the other engineering institutions instead. Fab. Well, if there's no more um, questions, I will leave this slide just up on the screen for another couple of minutes so people can jot down the details. Um, but we will be sending a copy of the webinar out to those who consented to receive it. Um, and thank you very much for your time this afternoon.